students, it's Mr. Bornheimer, and welcome. Uh, this is a chemistry video, uh, kind of more focused in in thermochemistry, and I'll be targeting today the idea of specific heat. If you look on the screen here, specific heat is this uh, concept of how much energy one gram of a substance can hold, uh, or I should probably say how much energy uh, one gram needs in order to raise that uh, the temperature of that substance one degree Celsius. So I'll kind of write this out. It is the energy, usually in joules or calories. Oh, my bad. And it is the energy needed to raise one gram of a substance. Now, this one gram can be anything. Uh, a lot of times in chemistry we focus in on water, but it's not just water. Uh, so the energy, joules or calories, you need to raise one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. Okay, and this is what specific heat is. Lots of different substances have different specific heats. For instance, gold has a specific heat that is equal to 0 0.13 joules per gram degree Celsius. Notice a few things about this. First of all, that I use the capital letter C. This represents or is the variable that represents specific heat. So we should probably put that in parentheses after specific heat. Notice I, there was a value, but then the units are kind of funky. The units are joules over gram per degree Celsius. This means that the energy needed to raise one gram of substance by one degree Celsius. So in gold, there is 0.13 joules of energy uh, for in one gram for every degree Celsius. Okay. Now, looking at this idea of specific heat, water is really quite useful. And uh, water oftentimes, these are some practice problems, water off is a very common specific heat. Water has a specific heat of 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. Now in class, we had introduced this kind of this equation called Q equals M, okay, C delta T. And what I want to do is I want to apply this equation today to a couple of the practice problems that you see here. So we're going to focus in, first of all, on number one, okay? And it says when 435 joules of heat is added to 3.4 grams of olive oil at 21 degrees Celsius, the temperature increases to 85 degrees Celsius. What is the specific heat of olive oil? Okay, so what we're looking for is specific heat. Now, there are four different variables here. There is heat, okay, energy. This is energy, and this is going to have units of joules. And then there is mass, okay, and that's going to be in units of grams. Then we have specific heat, C. Specific heat is in units of joules over gram per degree Celsius. And lastly, we have this temperature, which is going to be in degrees Celsius. So we have lots of things going on here. What we need to figure out is what do we have and what are we trying to find? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just undo those uh, kind of notes there. And we're going to see if we can't apply this equation uh, to problem number one. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. They say when 435 joules of heat is added, well, joules is energy, and the only quantity that we have that is, that is just energy is Q. So Q is going to be 435 joules. Okay, so we have that down. Then it says um, you are given 3.4 grams. Well, that's a mass, so mass is 3.4 grams, okay, not too bad. 
And then it says olive oil at 21 degrees Celsius. Well, that's an initial temperature. Well, what temperature am I going to use, 21 or 85? Well, a change in temperature, and this is kind of the tricky part of this equation, a change in temperature is equal to the temperature final minus the temperature initial. So in this particular situation, the change in temperature is equal to 85 degrees Celsius minus 21 degrees Celsius. And that actually ends up being about 64 degrees Celsius. Okay, so what we have going on here is we have Q equals MC delta T, and we are given QM and delta T. And we want to find C. Well, first thing we should probably do is rearrange the equation for C. So I notice that I can divide both sides by M delta T. Okay, so I'm going to do that, M delta T. Now, that means that this M goes away and the delta T goes away over here, and I, in essence, move them over to the left. So this leaves me with C equals Q over M delta T. Now I can plug in the values that I found in my problem. Uh, 435 joules for the energy, so we'll just go 435 joules here. Um, then we need mass and the change in temperature. Well, the mass was 3.4 grams, so we'll put 3.4 grams. And then the temperature change was 64 degrees Celsius, so we'll put 64 degrees Celsius here. Now, a couple things before we go ahead and do this. Notice that the units, joules on top, grams and degrees Celsius in the bottom. This matches up nicely with our units for specific heat. So we know we're on the right track if our units are set up correctly. So we can probably go ahead and divide or work this out. 3.4 times 64 is 217.6. If we take 435 and divide it by 217.6, we get roughly 1.999, or if we round to two significant figures, 2.0 joules per gram degree Celsius. So in problem number one, the specific heat of olive oil is about two grams per degree, or two joules per gram per degree Celsius. What that means is this, that it takes two joules to raise one gram of olive oil by one degree Celsius. Okay, so that's what that means. Okay, and uh, now number two is a lot like Number two is a lot like number one in the essence that it's asking for specific heat. Okay, since we already did a problem like that, I'm going to move on to number three, which is asking for how much heat is required to raise the temperature uh, of mercury, which, and it gives me mass and a temperature. Okay, now, this is interesting. What we're going to need to do is you're going to need to pull out your text. And you're going to need to look up some values. In this particular problem, we aren't given specific heat, but they're asking us to find heat. Okay? Well, I'm going to tell you why this is kind of a, a, an important or a, a, a tricky problem. You see, according to our equation, Q equals M cat. It's because the, the, the triangle here looks kind of like an A. According to our equation, we are given mass and we are given a change in temperature. But we are not given two things, C and Q. Well, the problem here is that you need three of these things in order for this equation to work. So I have M, I have delta T, I need to find Q, which means I need to look up or figure out C. Well, if in our textbook, and if you're watching this video and you aren't in my are not in my class, you can Google uh, specific heat of mercury. The specific heat of mercury happens to be 0 0.14, very similar, might I add, to gold. 
So the specific heat of mercury is 0 0.14 joules per gram per degree Celsius. Okay. So if we go back to our problem, okay, we see that we have how much heat is required to raise the temperature. That actually indicates a temperature change. Okay, so this 52 degrees Celsius is actually the temperature change. We don't need a final or initial because they give us the change. Okay, how much heat is required to raise the temperature of 250 grams of mercury uh, to 52, point, or 52 degrees Celsius? So what we do is we just plug in all the values. Okay, we know that we have a mass of 250 grams, a specific heat of 0 0.14 joules per gram degrees Celsius, and a change in temperature of 52 degrees Celsius. So if we were to go ahead and multiply this out, we would just have to multiply. That's really quite how simple it is. 250 times 0.14 times 52. And it ends up being 1820 or 1820. And the question is, what are the units? Well, grams are going to cross out here. And Celsius is going to cross out here. And that leaves me with joules. So my units are joules. And that kind of goes hand in hand with Q, which is energy. And energy has units of joules. So it really works out well that way as well. So this is the answer to number three, where Q equals 1820 joules. All right, now, one final thing to kind of talk about, and that is the difference between a calorie and a calorie. Okay, a calorie is the amount of energy needed to raise one gram of water, okay, by one degree Celsius. Very similar to specific heat. However, it's just for water. A big calorie is 1,000 little calories. Now, what is kind of important about this is that oftentimes we use calories when talking about food. For instance, I'm going to kind of do an example of a Big Mac. A Big Mac, okay, a Big Mac has lots and lots of calories. All right, but then, but I want to know how many joules of energy that is. Well, it just so happens, or how many calories a Big Mac is. I know that a Big Mac has 1.92 million joules of energy in it. Okay, so 1.92 times 10 to the sixth joules of energy. Okay, I know that. Now, it just so happens that because of the definition of a little calorie, that one gram of H2O by one degree Celsius, well, it just so happens that 4.18 joules, okay, happens to be the same amount of energy needed to raise one gram of water by one degree Celsius. So ca a calorie, a little calorie, one little calorie, one C-A-L, low lowercase C-A-L, is equal to 4.18 joules. Okay. So if we take our 1.92 million joules in a Big Mac and we divide it by 4.18, we can find out how many little calories are in a Big Mac. So 1.92 uh, times 10 to the 6th, that's a million, divided by 4.18. It ends up still being quite a large number. Uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 460. Okay, I'll round. So 460,000 little calories. However, if you've ever looked at a calorie count on, um, on, a, on a box of cereal or even on a Big Mac wrapper, you would know that a Big Mac does not have 460,000 calories. Okay, and the reason we don't call it that is be, or we don't say it has 460,000 calories is because your daily intake is supposed to be right around 2,000 calories. This little calorie, okay, is just a very, very small unit. The calorie they use in food is actually a thousand of these little calories. So if you divide this by a thousand, you end up with 460 large calories. 
and that is about right for one Big Mac from McDonald's. 460 calories is the equivalent of 1.92 million joules of energy. Okay, I hope this has helped clarify specific heat and the equation that we use in thermochemistry and maybe just the kind of the, the similarities between joules and calories and how to convert between one and the other. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and contact me at bclassroom.com. Thanks for watching.